My name is Eleanor Shellington. Eleanor Shellington the third, if you must know. Well, you must know. Now, of course, I come from the most noble of mermaid families. And it just so happens to be that I've been invited to the ocean floor's biggest bowl of the year. Well, naturally, I have all the browns. Now, it's good. Yes, of course. However, that tart Beatrice Flanderstone is always out to show me off when it comes to the finest of fashions. Well, that means... I have nothing to wear! What a travesty! Quick, to the guardrobe! I've got to put something together quickly to show up that beastly Beatrice and while the local sea life to keep my fearsome noble status in check. Good thing mermaids only have one garment to worry about, really. Time to craft the most stylish, most fashionable, most outlandish bra ever! Alrighty, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're taking a look at another splendiferous Android game, this time by none other than Twitter's Lucy Morris, who has some interesting tweets on occasion, and she has created Bra Bras and Balls, where you must help a mermaid pick out her lovely um, upper bra garment for the ball that she has been invited to, because we cannot be one-upped. If there's one thing Larry does not abide by, it's being one-upped by an upstarty, some other type of fish lady. Um, so we just have to pick, um, the bra cups and the bra strap, and then we go to the ball. But wait, there is something else here to be said about all of this. So, we have different, uh, options here for a different bra accoutrements. We've got crabs, we've got lobsters, what else we got? We got nautilus. The not a lie. What else we got? We've got an octopi. We, I don't know what. Oh, that's a crab claw. That's a seashell, a good classic. Larry likes him some seashell. Uh, what else we got? I believe that's a sea anemone. I we'll go with a sea anemone. It's all undulating, and you know how much Larry likes things that are undulating. What we got here? We got a turtle. Get me some turtle action. They're old and wise and ornery. Especially come party time. You get a couple spoonfuls of vodka on them and they know how to rip one out. We got a sea urchin. Not sure you want that on your, uh, on your lady areola parts, but I could be wrong. We've got a starfish. The suction is an interesting sensation, I won't lie. Um, got a seahorse. And then, well, that's it. So let's go, let's go with the, the starfish. And we'll just drag you over and we'll click you. But wait, we can't just put this on our bra. We need to answer some trivia first. And I kind of like that. Which method do starfish use to reproduce? Well, if I recall correctly, they like to undulate up against pretty much any other starfish. They do not discriminate. Uh, as long as it's a party and it's a good time and someone else is willing to undulate right back. So I'm going to go with asexual reproduction. Is that correct? Confirm. Do a do thing. Wrong? Starfish are lucky in the fact that they have a lot of choice. They can reproduce both asexually and- Oh! They swing both ways. Oh, you spineless, spicy j jiggers. Alright, well let's see what the next question will be. Oh, it's the same question. Sometimes they're different questions, sometimes they're the same. So let's go with both. They like to swing for both fences. Alright. Do the thing. Correct. The starfish are lucky. Yes. Alright, so now we have one cuppy. That is a starfish. It will undulate all over our areola while we were at the party. Keeping us, uh... Keeping us on track. And then what do we want? I think we want... What did I say we want? We either want the octopus... Or we wanted the undulating sea anemone. Nemone. Okay, let's do that. What kind of fish share a close bond with sea anemone? Um, clownfish. Clownfish, as you would know, like to hang out in the sea anemone, and um, they've got a special coating on their skin that makes them love each other, and um, but it prevents the clownfish from getting murdered. And like I say quite often, um, clownfish share my personal opinion of I like my organs to stay on the inside of my delightful cryptid body, and that's a good way to go about doing it, so confirm. Is it correct? 
Do the thing. Okay. I was correct. Sorry, I didn't get to read it. Little laggy on the input. Um, and then what do we want for a bra strap? Um, that's a little spiny. It's a piece of coral. That's a stick. Um, what else we got? That's seaweed. That's dead seaweed. What is that? I don't know what that is, but it looks suspicious. That looks like something else that I think you know what I mean. Um, that it? I guess that's it. Let's go with that weird thing. Yeah, give, give Larry some of that. This will look real weird. Oh, it's a sea cucumber. We could have a cucumber salad while we're at the party. Let's have to take a top off first. Okay, why are sea cucumbers called cucumbers? Um, because they resemble a cucumber? I don't think it's either of those other reasons. Let's see what it says. Correct! Sea cucumbers are animals, not plants. They're named for their innate resemblance to the vegetable cucumber, but nothing more. Well, and they cheat at cards like Kuki. Kuki is a cheater. Don't, don't get me wrong, I like playing poker with the guy, but I will cut him up and put him into a salad. It will happen. Alright, we have all of our spicy garment apparel. Let's jump in here and see what the ball says. Yellow Starfish was a recent highlight in Mayor Jacob's latest magazine. I'm so jealous. Stylish and it gives great suction support. Ah, oh, see, Larry called it. Larry called the suction. Let's see here. Next one that said, I love your sea anemone, and in fact, double as somewhere for your house keys, makeup, and merphone. Oh, the sea anemone is like a purse. Okay, what else we got? Um, was that it? No other notes? The other starfish was- oh wait, I always read that one. The choice of sea cucumber made you look like a bad girl, with all of the spikes and whatnot. We're unsure if that's the look you were going for as a noble. Well, Larry is a feisty gentleman. I like my fashion just as feisty, even if it makes me look like a bad boy. Or bad girl. I don't know. And so, that in a nutshell is bras and balls, and you can play around with the different um, sorts of combinations that you can get with your apparel, and um, play around with different sorts of Q&A, or what's the word I just said? Um, trivia. And I kind of like that. This is something that lends itself really well to sort of like an exploration kind of adventure story type game, where uh, maybe something like Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon, the Putt-Putt series was great. Loved me some of that as a kid. And this, this series definitely has really great art. It's got really great sound in the background and like little oceany vloops and leech. And I like that. It, it sort of combines this sort of dress up and adventure game where you get to customize things. And then it gives you some sort of educational experience. Um, I remember when I first picked this up on my tablet, um, I kind of played around with it and had a lot of fun because I, I didn't know a lot of the answers to some of this stuff about things like eels and things like lobsters or even the nautilus because that nautilus you know there was a question about how many facial tentacles does the average one have and i was just like i don't really know and i was like it can't be that many can it it was the middle number it was something like can have like up to 200 or something it was absolutely redonkulous and i didn't know that so that was pleasantly surprising you can play again and again in order to um play around with the different combinations it's pretty fun. So let's see, let's go, we'll go with one more combination before we jump out of here. Let's go with a lobster and um, an octopi and an eel. I like that combination. So let's pick out the lobster first. We've got, what's something not all lobsters have? A winning smile? I don't know, I've met a lot of really nice lobsters. They're pretty swell chaps. If you're having a bad day, they'll cheer you up with one of their little pinchies. I mean, I'm not sure if you like getting your cheeks pinched when you're having a bad day. I'm not always down for that. Just don't challenge them to a nipple twisting contest, because they will win. I don't even think they have them. I think they've been lying to me. Okay? Um, I don't think they all have a winning smile. 
So let's go with that option wrong. We naturally think claws when we think of lobsters, but some lobsters, like spiny lobster, have no claws, but super long antenna. Alright, let's let's try that again. Or claws? Correct! We naturally think claws. Okay, that's weird. Huh. Alright, let's go with the octopus now. How many eggs does the female octopus release after mating? Oh, that's a lot of eggs. Is it... this many? This is like the middle number. Octopus could probably lay a lot of eggs. Lots of animals, like frogs, lay a boatload of eggs. I don't know if you know that. Cane toads are a huge problem in places like Australia, just for that reason. Correct! Although female octopi lay between 100,000 and 500,000 eggs after they hatch, only one or two of the hatchlings survive until adulthood. Ouch. Yeah, that's a terrible lottery number. I fully agree, Miss Morris. All right, what do we got? Oh, we got the eel. Mr. Ely. What is the correct name for a baby eel? An eelet, an elver, an earring. You know, I just watched a documentary about eels and how we're murdering the eels and how they're really integral to a lot of different native sort of tribal cultures around the world. And I should remember this. Good thing they freaking Netflix doesn't have pop quizzes. Is it e eelet? I'm going to go with earring. Wrong. After metamorphosing from larvae, eels become baby elvers. After becoming of age, or after coming of age, they begin to travel upstream. So essentially in the life cycle, I found this fascinating. Most eels around the world all are born the same way, or at least the eels that you find in places like rivers out east. And they all go and they spawn in the ocean, and they have hundreds of eggs, and then they go back upstream and grow and do their thing after they start to mature. And then they eventually, after years and years and years, go back to the ocean and do their matey undulating thing and have more little eel babies, and we're dangerously close to making them very extinct, apparently. Okay, let's try that again. Come, Mr. Eel. Actually, hold on. Let's... Wait. Oh, okay, we have a different question. What are eels generally covered in? Mucus spikes stingers. I'm going to go with mucus. Wrong. Eels are covered with a disgusting slimy... Well, that's what I said. I said mucus. Okay, well, whatever. No, no one said the world had to be perfect. All right, well, let's go with mucus again. Can I... Can I... Correct. Yes, the mucus. The gooey and undulaty. It's splendid. Okay, let's go to the ball once more before we end off. Alrighty, so we got another badge. We got slimy. What the guest had to say. The lobster was not an ideal bra cup component, but it did hold your drink for you while you demonstrated your party trick. An excellently ironic rendition of Under the Sea, performed in a fake flatulence. Splendid, now that's the kind of party favor I enjoy. The eel appeared to provide you solid support, both physically and emotionally. After briefly talking with the eel, named Chad, we learned of the pep talk he gave you before the ball. Oh, Mr. Ely Chad, you're so... you're such a swell guy. Okay. Was the most impressed that your stylish octopus, you were able to dole out high fives to guests six people at a time. Jolly good show. Now that, that's a, spa, that's a swanky bra cup if Larry's ever heard of one. A high-fiving octopi bra cup. Now that is someone who has your back followed by the eel, not so much the lobster, but he will hold your drink. I'm going to call the lobster Drew, and while Drew doesn't necessarily cheat at cards like the cucumber, Drew will probably try to get drunk and steal your car. Um, did we have anything else to say? I don't think so. Nope, that's all. Well, that was pretty good. I really like this game. Um, I'm not really someone who goes in for dress up and I thought that's a lot of what this game was. But it was a it was an interesting and very unique way of combining um, a mix and match of, you know, defining your own bra cup bra cup for the ball and some trivia about the undersea adventures that you might not have known. And honestly I didn't know about quite a bit of this trivia when I first checked this out. So, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. This is a really cool yet short game done by Lucy Morris. Check her out. She's got a Twitter and she's got a website, both of which you can find in the video description along with the link to download this game. It's ad supported, so if you see something tantalizing in that little ad window, do give it a click so she can get a, a little bit of change. 
Um, probably not a lot, because ads don't pay a lot, but it's a little something and it's great. Um, check out our other games. They look pretty tasty. I might check some of those out for review later. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and toodaloo!